Welcome once again. Right now we're at the beginning of another letter of Paul to the people in Corinth, to the believers especially in Corinth. I'm going to be reading verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, through the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the assembly of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in the whole of Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now if you notice, Paul always identifies himself at the beginning of each one of his letters. And in this case, he's got Timothy with him. And so he identifies himself and he also identifies his audience to the saints in Corinth, to the believers in Corinth. Now a little bit of a rabbit trail here. This is the reason why I believe that Hebrews is not written by Paul, okay? There are many other reasons, and I'm not going to get into all that until we get to the book of Hebrews, but I just wanted to throw that in there. Once again, we need to always keep this in perspective. And you know, most Christians, most people I know of, they don't keep Paul's letters in perspective. They read Paul's letters as if it's actually the word of Jesus or the word of one of the twelve. As Paul said himself in the previous letter, 1 Corinthians, that he is not one of the twelve. That he is like born out of time, so to speak. That he's like the least of all. And so we got to keep this in perspective, okay? So we're not reading the words in red here. We're not reading the words of one of the twelve here. We are reading the words of Paul who is kind of outside of the circle. He came to the knowledge of Jesus late, so to speak, okay? But he had a lot of knowledge, of course, in Judaism, in the Torah, in the law, in the prophets. And so he's got a lot of good things to say. Don't forget that even the apostle Peter, now we're talking about one of the 12 here. Peter, not just one of the 12, but he was one of the inner circle. He was one of the few disciples that was able to come with Jesus everywhere. Okay, There were a few times that Jesus said to the other nine, no, you stay back. I'm just going in with Peter, James, and John here. Okay, Actually, James, his real name was Yaakov or Jacob. Peter said in 2 Peter that Paul's letters are difficult to understand. And many people twist his letters, twist his teachings to their own destruction. And in context there, if you read 2 Peter just before that, he's talking about living a holy life, a sinless life, sinless and spotless, you know, at the time of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what Peter is saying here is that many people take Paul's letters, and even today, so much more today because we are so far removed from the culture, from the times, from the days from Peter, James, and John, and the, and the disciples, and the days of Jesus. People take Paul's letters to try to justify, you know, their sin, their hypocrisy, and this is to their own destruction. If you read the letters of Peter, James, and John, you will see that they don't speak like Paul. They don't talk like grace versus works, or faith versus works except for James, and James makes it very clear, you cannot be saved by dead faith, okay? You need to have works. So I strongly recommend to everybody to read and study and understand the Tanakh, the Torah, the, the prophets, the writings, and the other books such as the Gospels and Peter, James, and John before you get into Paul, because otherwise you can be very confused. And you know what? Paul is confusing. Even Peter said that. Peter said that Paul is hard to understand. That is quite a statement. Think about who Peter is. One of the lead disciples of the twelve. Think about this. Peter is like a genius when it comes to the things of Christianity. He was one of the closest ones to Jesus, okay? Now, if Peter says that Paul's letters are hard to understand, you better believe they're hard to understand. That's just like Einstein saying, well, this particular author here, over here, this particular scientist is very difficult to understand and a lot of people misinterpret this scientist. If Einstein says that, you, you better believe it is hard to understand, it's complicated. If Peter said that Paul is hard to understand, you better believe that Paul is hard to understand. So in reading the first few verses here, we need to always keep in perspective, we have Paul speaking to the people in 
Corinth, to the believers in Corinth. And don't forget, Paul is not always right. He wasn't always right in the book of Acts, and he wasn't always right in the book of 1 Corinthians either. We already dealt with that, especially in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. If you missed that teaching, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.